Welcome to Take 5. Today we have Ana Lagana with us, a conservator specializing in plastics, and she's going to share the recent research she's been doing at the Getty Conservation Institute. Thank you so much for joining us, Anna. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about what drew you to the conservation of plastics? Yeah, sure. Uh, what drew me to the conservation of plastic were definitely the many challenges that this new material posed to conservator. I got excited and attracted to the idea of finding solutions to overcome this challenge and try to conserve this material. And still I am. That's fantastic. One of the areas you've been looking at is how to repair scratches and chips on acrylic with filling methods. Um, what are the typical methods that have been used up until now? Yes, currently the most common method used is polishing, which is an invasive treatment because it's based on the overall removal of the acrylic surface until the damage disappears instead of its actual repair. Furthermore, when a damage like the chip in the slide is too deep, then this uh, treatment, this polishing is not an option because it will entail the removal of a large quantities of acrylic disfiguring the artifact. Right. And the polishing the surface is not possible with uh, acrylics that have anti-reflective surfaces, right? Yes, it's also not an option because Removing the damage uh, means removing also the anti-reflective coating, and this is, will change dramatically the original of appearance of this type of uh, face-mounted photograph. Yeah, I've actually seen it look like an iridescent finish. Exactly. Um, it's been polished. And I understand that you're using two different kinds of materials for the fills? Yes. Yes, we have investigating actually 18 products and uh, uh, two materials prove to be the best for filling acrylic. One is the two component epoxy resin, Ixtal and YL1. And the other one is the hydrocarbon resin, Rigorous 1094, which needs to be sold at 40% in the solvent shells of D40. Um, these two products work very well uh, because they are stable over time and uh, because of their uh, suitable working properties, such as the low viscosity, which led them to easily flow into such a tiny damage, and especially for their optical properties, because their optical properties of this product, they closely match the one of the acrylic, and mm -hmm. this uh, uh, brings the transparency back when, once you feel the damage. Right. Well, here we have a, an example um, with three scratches uh, before filling on the left and um, after filling two of the scratches on the right. Can you tell us a little bit about the technique here? Yes. Uh, as you can see on the right, two scratches were filled, the top one with the Hicks style and the second one with Rigorette. So they both work very well. The transparency was recovered. Moreover, Rigorette is also reversible in solvent in case this is, can be a concern. And um, here's a little bit about the um, application tool that you're using. Can you explain a little bit about your um, technique? Yes. The method is very simple. Basically consists in applying the products, one of the two, within the boundary of the damage, scratches or chips, until the loss is completely filled, taking care not to overfill uh, the damage and to don't spread the material on the acrylic. In, in this way, uh, you know, you avoid later finishing, so like polishing or cleaning later the acrylic surface with any solvent. And as you can see here, for scratches, we advise to use a mini brush so you remain within the boundary of the damage. And generally, one application is enough. Fantastic. And here is a treatment of a chip. How is that different? Yeah, for chip, as you say, the technique is the same. We are within the boundary of the damage, but what it changed are the different um, uh, tools that we are using. For Hicks, uh, generally we use a fine needles, while for Rigorettes, uh, which is in solution, we advise to use a glass pipette uh, because it's uh, a very low viscosity material. And this is the kind of treatment you can do for uh, anti-reflective surfaces as well? 
Yes, on anti-reflective uh, surfaces, it works very well. However, it works very well on very uh, fine damage, mm. damage like a fine crash. But mm. if the uh, damage is large, like the chip, the repair could be visible for a certain angle uh, because the um, optical properties of this product and the one of the uh, anti-reflective coating are slightly different. I see. Well, here on regular acrylic, it really looks like magic. Yes, it is. And this is due to the product. Here is filled with Hixta, which uh, has a minimal uh, dimensional change over time and a, a better leveling compared to rigorettes, so allowed fewer application compared to the solvent-based material. But what makes the repair magic is definitely uh, the match uh, uh, between the optical properties of this product and the one of the acrylic. So you can really? see the currency is back. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Well, if viewers want more information um, on these treatments and methodology, they can go to the Getty website, right? I think we have some links here for your publications. Sure. Yeah, sure. One link is where uh, the project is described and the other links where you can find our GCI publication on the materials and methods we have tested and we've developed. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for sharing your research with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Mm -hmm.